Mr. Speaker, I have to tell you, I feel more comfortable if you say the member for the Four South. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, by all accounts, this is a, a sizable sum of money, $80, $80 million. <clears throat> and the bank, First National Bank, Mr. Speaker, really has to be congratulated for making this significant sum of money available for expenditure in youth and sports infrastructure at an interest rate of 4%. And I guess it does tell a story about the state of the financial markets that we're now in an era when the rates of interest for borrowers in particular are attractive. All accounts 4% is, is remarkable. And uh, the receiving organization <coughs> need to be complimented as well for successfully negotiating at those rates. But Mr. Speaker, what um, aroused my curiosity was the <coughs> statement by the Minister of Finance indicating where some of that money will go. Pointed out as number one, the Darren Sammy grounds <coughs> needed for World Creek for Cricket World Cup. Then also a tranche goes to the Grosley playing field. And then <clears throat> he targeted the upgrade of the Mindu Phillip Park as a third major project. So I saw him hovering up in the north and I kept on saying to myself, I wonder when is he going to start to hover south? But alas, he ended his contribution without taking flight or hovering in the south. And Mr. Speaker, this is really my point of, of departure. There is no way that the projects identified by the Minister of Finance could conceivably cost $80 million. So once that expenditure is completed on these three major projects, there's bound to be a significant amount of money left behind. And the question is, where is that money going to be spent and who are going to be the beneficiaries? I didn't have you fought south. I did not hear have you fought south, Mr. Speaker. And I am certain that the young people in Beaufort South, the sports men and women of Beaufort South, hearing this debate and hearing this sum of money, will not be complimentary if their parliamentary representative did not raise the issue of their plight. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I have made the point before that the one constituency that was singularly affected by storm breath was the Fort South. We lost the roof of two of our schools, we lost the roof of a preschool, a few private buildings were damaged. And our major infra sporting infrastructure, the, the roof of the Philip Masley ground was torn asunder. It's now well over a year and repairs have not been conducted to the Philip Marcelin grounds. We suffered the indignity, Mr. Speaker, of several schools holding their athletic competitions on those grounds because that's the only place they have to go. They can't hardly ever go now at the George Odlam Stadium. And they had, of course, to do so in an environment in which they could not um, occupy the Darren Sandy ground because of the torn roof. But what is bothersome is a silence that no one is saying when that roof will be repaired, 
or when will this problem is and in the next few days Mr. Speaker I'm supposed to open the LLA games in that very same ground and it bothers me Mr. Speaker that I have to officiate at a ceremony to do the welcome to the athletes and the participants and again to be up to, to be doing so in a pavilion without without a roof. I will be gentle, Mr. Speaker, I will be benign. Because I'm aware that the estimates of revenue and expenditure will be presented in the next couple of days. I am sorry that the Minister of Sports is, is not here because I would have loved to hear from him and I want to find out what is in his, his radar for Beaufort South. Because I know Beaufort South for some reason or the other has not been on his radar the last three years. So it has to be that Beaufort South will be on his radar this year. And woe be unto him because as you rightly said a while ago, I'm supposed to occupy the chair of the Deputy Speaker. <laughs> now, <laughs> Now, Mr. Speaker, you would know that when you occupy the chair of deputy speaker, you have a license to ask questions others might not want to ask. You would also know, Mr. Speaker, that I will bring my own character, my own style to the chair. Even if I may emulate you from time to time, but you have to expect there will be departures. After all, the rules of accountability have to change, have to be redesigned. So, Mr. Speaker, I hope for his own sake that if he's in the island and he comes to Parliament next week, he can speak with a clarity about his program of sports development for Beaufort South. Because nothing has happened in the last three years, and I'm concerned about the roof of the, the, the facility. It's, it's, it's too long. But there's also a project we have spoken about for a very long time, and that is the upgrading of, a plane, of the playing field next to the Beanfield Secondary School and the Primary School to facilitate and accommodate the training of the students of both schools, they wish to create a specialized field devoted exclusively to the students so that they are not compromised that because they cannot use the Philip Master ground. And I would love to hear from him as to what plans he has and whether finally we're going to see the, the light of day. Now, obviously, Mr. Speaker, the statements I'm making should suggest to you, sir, that I intend to monitor the expenditure of the national lotteries closely and see where they deploy these funds. Which now brings me on to my second point. You know, Mr. Speaker, a lot of these agencies don't know how to deal with constituencies and don't know how to relate to parliamentary representatives. It's an issue I have repeatedly complained about. And Mr. Speaker, I am hoping that the National Lottery Association who has been trusted by the government of St. Lucia to undertake such monumental work in the various constituencies in this island would also clarify in good time the exact procedures which will be employed to access those funds to ensure that the that community infrastructure is put into place. Because this haphazard way of doing things that you suddenly get a call that X is happening, Y is happening, is unacceptable. I don't tolerate it and I will repudiate it. So I would hope that very early they can say to me 
that of the 80 million that they have been that they have received by the authority vested in the parliament of St. Lucia, 5 million, 8 million, 10 million will be allocated to VA 4000. And this is how the money is to be accessed. War be unto them, Mr. Speaker. War be unto them. And my patience is running thin. If, if in the next few months, what has to be done in the Fort South to alleviate the plight of the young people in the Fort South is not done. Now, Mr. Speaker, I, I listened intently, of course, to the presentations of honorable members. Of course, quite rightly praising the young people and um, welcoming the massive investment and so on. And it's always interesting to listen to the member for Beaufort North. Sometimes I think he's schizophrenic, Mr. Speaker, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. He has a problem deciding whether he's a Beaufortian or is a, a Bellevue man. He don't know exactly where the poles lie. Or VJ man, whatever the case is. <laughs> and today is a classic example. He praises the young people of, of Belby quite rightly, and I want to tell him that I too am lending support to, uh, to the parents of Naomi London for the celebration they'll have. So I do assist you in your constituency. And then, of course, he suddenly remembers the out outstanding performance. You heard me, yeah. You, you better relate to him what I have said. So, so he's heard about the outstanding performance of Beaufort Comprehensive School, and then he suddenly started to speak of we. Of we. And that explains the depth, the depth of his problem. But that's not my point. My point is that for a community that has defined sporting activity in this country, it is amazing that the investment that it needs is not always forthcoming. And that is why I am very interested in finding out what is going to be done with this 80 million. And I'm hoping that it will touch Viewfort South and make a difference to the community of Beaufort South. Of course, once the National Lottery is handling this expenditure, it means the bureaucracy that is often involved and entails in accessing funds from ministries and so on will be minimized and eased. And so I am hoping that the projects will be conceptualized very quickly and once conceptualized, implemented as quickly as possible. So Mr. Speaker, this is really just a plea that some of those funds reach the young people of the Fort South and their facilities are repaired. That goes, of course, as I said, to the Philip Marsler grounds. It goes, of course, to the other sporting facilities like, for example, the basketball court, etc., all which have fallen into disrepair in the last few years. I say no more, Mr. Speaker, but I shall be watching and observing very carefully. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.